accepted and uh, there, there's no anti-semitism here so that makes like the perfect uh, environment to be Jewish and uh, let's say in other countries where the anti-semitism is it's higher you won't find these kind of groups I live in Paris and there they, you have anti-semitism so one time someone is spitted on a group of, of my friends and I and uh, in, in Buenos Aires there's anti-Semitism. I, I, I've been religious all my life and I've been wearing a kippah since I was a little kid. I never, never in my life had any attack here. Here in Colombia, the Jews are very, are, are very accepted and we have maybe very good, uh, how can I say it, uh, names. And uh, I mean, the Jews here are seen like good people, like the prosperous people, so maybe that is the reason why. Here in Colombia you won't find anti-Semitism, maybe because, two, two, two reasons, because they really accept us or because they don't even know what we are. Sometimes they, they think we, we are Arabic and we study the Quran, I mean they, 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 they really don't know like the difference between this and this and it's just like maybe there's no anti-Semitism because they really don't know what is a Jew. In the last uh, immigration of Jews to Colombia, the first, the first ones were, I mean, that came in that last, uh, how do you say, wave of immigration, yes, yeah. were Sephardic Jews that came to Colombia in the, in the, early, in the early 20s. Turkanos. Huh? Turkanos, no? Turkey? No, people from uh, Syria. Syria, Turkey, uh, yes. Uh, Syria, Turkey, or, or, or Israel, Egypt. yes, oh. and, uh, and after that there was like a big, big wave of immigration from, the, from Europe before the war and after the war, and also after uh, like around the 50s there, were, there was like the last immigration of Sephardic Jews that came uh, from, from uh, uh, that were expelled from their countries because of the independence of Israel, and so they came to Colombia because they already had families that came in the in the early twenties. So, so the, and, and before that, maybe there was Jewish communities here. I don't know if you had. It, I mean, you came by 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 flight. Yes. Okay. The the, the, the name of the airport in Barranquilla is Ernesto Cortizos. He was a Jewish guy. A Jewish guy that started the aviation in Colombia and that was a pioneer in the, in the aviation and uh, he, he started Avianca. Avianca, the airline of Colombia, was started by him and a group of, of, of friends, friends. Of Jewish friends. Yeah, I don't know if Jewish friends, but, but the, and the, the, the Sephardic cemetery here in Barranquilla has really, really old tombstones saying that there was a, that there was a Jewish community and a Jewish life a big Jewish life here uh, before the in, the in the 18th century. Sirio oh. y de origen israelí. Sí. El otro es de los judíos que llegaron de Curazao. Curazao. Los primeros judíos que llegaron aquí. Sí. Que es del siglo XVIII y XIX. Bueno, este es el moderno, por decirlo de alguna manera. Sí, sí. Mira, Ernesto Cortizo, este fue el que trajo la aviación oh, a este sí. país. Oh, sí. oh, que... El aeropuerto se llama en honor a él. Es él. Este es Ernesto Cortizo. Él trajo la aviación a Colombia. Pues diga de nuevo. Eso es. Esta es la tumba de Ernesto Cortizos, el hombre que trajo la aviación a este país y, y, que, y que trajo todo lo que es la, la industria aeronáutica a Colombia. Lo trajo él. Y, la, y la, el aeropuerto de Barranquilla se llama Ernesto Cortizos. Escuché de alguien, no sé si es verdad, que en el mundo hay solo dos aeropuertos que tienen nombres de judíos. El de Tel Aviv, que se llama el aeropuerto Ben Gurion, 
y el de Barranquilla que se llama Aeropuerto de Metro Cortizos. Sí. Solamente en el mundo hay dos lugares con el aeropuerto tiene nombre de un judío, honor a un judío. Tel Aviv, obviamente en Israel, y Barranquilla en honor a él. Y Abraham Zacarías López Peña es el escritor más famoso que ha recibido aquí en Barranquilla. Sí. Abraham Zacarías López Peña, que está allá. Sí. Es, es el escritor más famoso que ha nacido en, este, en esta ciudad. Gader García Márquez es famoso, pero no nació en Barranquilla. Pero el más famoso es él, los libros de él son famosísimos. Son más famosos en Europa que aquí. ¿Y cómo se llama? El... Abraham Zacarías López Peña. ¿Y qué son algunos de sus libros? Es un poeta, un poeta sí. de 1920. Son poesías. ¿Tú sabes alguno? Sí, sí, claro. ¿Puede Yo tengo varios. ¿Puede? Ah, que si se re... No, de él así de memoria, no, no sé. No sé. Pero, Pero sí lo he leído, claro. Sí. My family is from Turkey, my father. Which part? My, from my father's side, they're Turkey and Polish. My grandfather was from Turkey and my grandmother from Poland. And from my mother's side, they're from Syria and Egypt. Do you know where in Turkey? No, I don't know exactly. Because they, they moved, uh, my, my family, the family of my grandfather, well, they were very religious. So they moved to Poland. It's like a really rare case. In the 16th century? No, 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 no. no. In the in the in the 18th century, in the, and they moved to to I mean they were Turkey Turkish and they they, they keep all the Sephar, like all the Sephardic customs, but they were living in Poland. And my grandfather he was sent to Auschwitz and he had like the, he was a Holocaust survivor. And from my mother's side the, they were expelled from Egypt after the after the independence of Israel in the 50s and they went to to France from France to Haiti and from Haiti to Colombia. From Haiti to Colombia. Yes. The, the new converts, uh, the ideas, are they being accepted? Like, what's going to happen to them? In it, as you said before, it's a phenomenon that we don't understand because we don't know the reason. That's the answer. And uh, we just, like, we don't know how, what to think or what to do with How to handle it. Yes, how to handle it. What, what I mean, <laughs> it, it, we accept we accept we accept conversions in our communities in the traditional communities. Yes. We don't have any problem with that. If it's orthodox conversions yes. doing like in the right way. But that's one if one family, two families, three families. We're talking about 40. hundreds of families. I mean, yeah. a lot of families. We feel very happy about people wanting to convert to Judaism, but we don't, we don't encourage them to do it. Yeah, no. If they want by their own means, it's fine. And, and if they do it in the Orthodox uh, way, it's fine with us. I mean, and we, we're happy to receive them, and we have a lot of uh, converted people in our community. But slowly. In reality, there are various stories that se fusionan para lograr llegar al punto de tener la comunidad. Teníamos familias de acá del centro de Medellín que se habían convertido, pero no tenían comunidad. Y teníamos otras familias que no se habían convertido y que estaban guardando judaísmo como si nacieron judíos. Sí. Comiendo cayer, tajarán, mishpajá, o sea, todo lo que el judaísmo como tal le enseña. Entonces, eh, un grupo de cuatro familias hablaron conmigo 
planteamos la idea de establecer una sí. comunidad porque hay muchas personas eh, guardando judaísmo en el Valle de Aburrá, en, en Medellín, y logramos eh, unificar criterios a la hora de eh, establecer la comunidad. Sí. Eh, estas personas que no se habían convertido, producto de los contactos que tengo en Israel, logramos traer un rabino y armar un bekdin, un tribunal, para que las personas se convirtieran según la ley judía. Lo hicimos en Barranquilla y 45 personas se convirtieron en ese momento en ¿Cuándo? Barranquilla. ¿Cuándo? ¿Hace poco? El 18 de noviembre del año pasado. Oh. Entonces, Esta semana pasada estuvo el rabino acá en la sinagoga, oh, sí. con de, otros rabinos más. ¿De Israel o de dónde? El rabino de Israel. Sí. sí. ¿Son ortodoxos sefardicos? Sí, sí. sefardicos. Sí. Sí. Si somos sefardín, por lógica somos ortodoxos, somos observantes. Sí. No, no es como Askenaz, que los Askenaz sí tienen más sortín, reformista. Sí. ¿no? Aquí somos Shomer Shabbat, eh, estamos cada vez encaminados, por eso se llama Derech Torah, el camino sí. de la Torah. Derech, camino, Torah, el camino de la Torah. Muy bien. Where did you train to be a rabbi? I am a cantor. A, 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 cantor, a hazan. I became a cantor the, the old-fashioned way. I had Learning. tutors. Uh, I oh. had an old German cantor in the synagogue of my father in yes. Bogotá. And rabbis, Argentinian rabbis who came in the 70s taught me most of what I know. Yes. But did you learn in the Ashkenaz tradition? Yes. So you don't have the Sephardic? No, not at not, all. Not at all. No. That's okay. I'm Ashkenaz. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> So how are the people seeing the new group uh, from Beya? Look, it's a Catholic, uh, it's a Christian church, uh, guys that went to Israel because of the Colombian government having an agreement with Israel after the violence here. They sent some people to learn from the experience in Israel that you can live with violence, that you can um, continue living mm -hmm. uh, above all. and, and uh, Un, how do you say that? In well, they 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 went to Israel. Two of them were pastors of this mega church. Yes, they had a big church. A big yes. church, three thousand. Uh, it's uh, amazing. <laughs> and then they came back and they felt well, Jewishness. That's our thing. So six hundred stayed with them. One of them left and lives in Brooklyn. They don't know much about him. I suppose mm. he's a very orthodox rabbi in Brooklyn. And uh, the other one is now studying in Israel. Uh, it's a, a pastor that uh, has been their teacher, a very nice person. They are very orthodox, very traditional, very. Obser observant Jews. Uh, and this, this uh, area where we are now in the social uh, facility, they have built this in 80 years. And they're very afraid that these people who suddenly became Jewish are coming in and taking over. So they could because they're young. Yeah, I mean, they're, exactly, they're a young exactly. group. But but there are many voices that say in the community that the at the long run they will be part of the community because this community is dying out. <laughs> It was a big community once, it was 600 people, now it's only 200. Um, I couldn't start a youth group because of the lack of children. There are small children coming in the preschool, but uh, it's difficult. So if they want to grow and they want to continue, they probably will have to open up. But they're very afraid. Very afraid. But eventually, maybe they open up. We'll see. Forget, I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> they they told me they all have have been circumcised. Oh They're yes, amazing. And and uh, the difference That's... with Bayou and other communities, because there are two others. Yes. In Medellin, there is another one that 
they separated from Bello yes. and started another community at, in the downtown, it's called yes. Prado Centro. And that's also a group of like 30 families that mm -hmm. have started a new community from maybe two years ago. Uh, I comment on that on the blog as yes. well. Uh, the guy there uh, is a Venezuelan uh, who has a web page mm -hmm. and he's very much into this finding out of the Jewish uh, Antioquia, that yes. they believe that uh, all the Antiochenians have a Jewish origin and this and that. It's possible. <laughs> That's why Mejia yeah. comments on yes. that. Um, it could be, but uh, Memo Anka will give you more hints about yes. that, because he thinks that the, the people who came, Jewish people who came, came in the 1800s. Yes. It's not so that people from the 1500s or 1600s are, uh, were coming to Antioquia. But there are names like Gomez, oh, that's very true. Lopez, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think they, came, they were already converted when they oh, came, could be. and then the Inquisition what my friend Anna says is they came to this side of Antioquia yeah. because it was further away from sure. this. Sure, it happens in the, in, in the south of Ecuador as well, yes. in Loja, yeah. because they couldn't find them They there. couldn't find them. Exactly. And they still had all yeah. the... Like, yeah. the there is a very has. serious study on, on this. So you know what, what, what's one of, also of our fears? That there's like a lack of motivation from the Catholics with the church, with their church. Right. And so these pe these Catholics are like looking. I mean, the ones that really yeah. want the spirit spirituality, they're they're moving from this religion to this religion to this religion to this religion, looking for that and trying to find it. So maybe I mean sometimes exactly our fear sometimes our fear is that you don't even in Judaism because you wanted to be Jewish just because because you're trying to find something that you know. It, I think there's a lot, uh, there must be like a lot of time happening now and passing to, for us to see what's their motivation. If we find that their motivation is sincere, I mean that they really want to be Jewish because they want to be Jewish and because they love the Torah and Hashem and the mitzvot and the tradition, so I think we, we would accept them without an exemption. And we don't know what to do because how can you say if their if the, if their motivation to convert to Judaism it's the, it's honest and if they're doing it in the right way what's motivating them that's that's very important what is motivating them to convert to Judaism because being Jewish it's very difficult it's not easy at all and uh, do, you, do you think being Jewish this is a question for me for okay. you. I'm Jewish, but I'm not a religious Jew, but I feel totally Jewish culturally and everything. And so these people are becoming Jewish through the religion, but not the culture. So there's the divide. And I mean, the first part is that we don't know what's motivating them. The second part is that, as you said, I mean, we have like a, a, little, uh, a big... Uh, Carga, uh, how do you say it? A si. big, uh, si. history. Like a big history under our, you know, our families went to, to, to I mean, we're at the Holocaust or in Israel or this or that. I mean, we such ha we have such much, such, so many, so much tradition and so much stories to tell and so many, so many things from our families that they don't have. So we have a, 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 a sense of belonging, a big one. And we, 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 I mean, uh, you are not religious, but you said you feel Jewish, and that's important. Why? Because your family was Jewish, and I'm religious because it's I feel exactly. But religion. they don't have this, so it's that's the second part. And the third part, it's maybe social, and it's, I mean, I, I don't like the idea of, of this, but sometimes it's very social because the the people that are converting. To Judaism now in Colombia, these groups they come from a very low middle class, middle class to low, low. Okay. and uh, and the Jewish community here has been from middle to high. Right. So maybe that the, the, the both worlds like are in like in a fight maybe, and uh, so maybe that's the third problem that I see. But I see, I, I mean, the, the times are changing. These people is being accepted in small groups in Bogota. The, the first groups that convert in, in Bogota are being accepted slowly into the traditional Jewish community. 
if their conversions, as I said before, are right and being uh, handled by the Orthodox movement. And, uh, and so, so I see that happening in every community. I see that maybe in small groups we can accept them and let them be part of our communities. But in such a good groups, we feel maybe scared that they're gonna take over. replace us and, and take over <laughs> us. Maybe <laughs> this that will happen in Medellin. That's not going to happen in Medellin. I don't see that because... Because Medellin, I'm muy poco gente. I must... No, I know that, I know that, but it's... There has to be a lot of time have a, still to, 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 to the, for that to happen. I don't, I don't see it happening now, but we feel that. We feel see, scared no. about that. We see. feel scared that they're going to be the, the ones representing Judaism. And and we talk to some of them and like, they want to go to the other of the birds. That's but they're going. they're going. They're going. If they can pay. Ah. If they can pay, they can go. That, they that's go. the problem, you know. And... Uh, I mean, inside our the traditional communities, are, of course, there are people that they don't have. Uh, uh, how how can I say it? Yeah. This week I am rabbi. But we help them. You know, yeah. inside the community, we help. I mean, if you don't have I'm to so pay so the so school, so. oh yes, we we give you a scholarship. If you, if you don't have food, we give you food. Yeah, to they eat. hope they can get a scholarship. I talk to them. But it's very hard because it, it's a lot of them. You know. In our, in our communities, it's one or two or three. There is like every, everyone, so. The call and uh, from someone, and he said to me, Rabbi, I want to convert to Judaism. So, and I said, I was, I, I, I was used to receiving this type of calls, maybe 10 calls per week of people wanting to convert to Judaism. So I said, and what's, why? Why you want to convert to Judaism? And he said, because you, the Jews are so rich and you know, I am so poor that I believe that yes, God, God sends uh, money, I don't know, by rain to you. And you know, I believe if I become Jewish, I'm going to be rich. So it's crazy. And they said, you know what? We don't convert. <laughs> Do you think there's an issue of race that plays a part? Uh, I mean, yes or no, yes or no. Yes, I know because we have here uh, one of these families is accepted. Two, two of the, the, these families that were part of the groups are accepted. And so I, but slowly, I mean, it's like if, if, if someone forces you to bring to, inside your home a, a, a people that you don't know, you're gonna feel like that, like he's a like a stranger in my house, you know. And, we feel like that sometimes, but when you get to meet these people, their families, that they're, they're very good and honest, and they really feel Jewish, so you, I mean, you accept them. Yeah. But time, we need time for that. Okay. And they, they don't, they don't. Sometimes they don't respect that. That we need our time to accept them, and they, they just want everything like so fast, and we need time, time to like digest it, and to see what's going. On. What's going to happen? I don't, I don't understand the hangout with all of the people here in, in Medellin. You know what are they worried about? Well, they're they're going to be the younger Jewish congregation. In the future. But my point is, who cares? Yeah. You know, I would worry more about the congregation that we have here. Mm -hmm. You know, getting them more involved in the in the in the community and involved in everything yeah. else. I would, I would worry about what we have, taking care of what we have as opposed to looking to, to screw somebody else. I mean, well, they're not trying to screw No, somebody. but I'm saying, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's all politics. To me, it, I mean, it's ridiculous. That's my opinion. It's ridiculous. They have, a, they have their, uh, uh, their congregation there. Yeah, they have and let, 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 let live and let live, let them have the kind And they've of already broken into two congregations. Huh? They've already broken into two. They didn't get along with each other. Who, who broke into two? They the Jews in Bayo. They now have a second group in Prado. No kidding, they broke off. Yeah. Another, a, group, a splinter group. A splinter group. Well, no crap, that's you, incredible. You didn't hear about that. That, I didn't hear about it, no. I really don't get involved very much in anything. I got my own, my own problems. 
and I worry about my own problems. Live and let live. I think it's nice that, the, you know, that there are other people that, uh, obviously there are other people that, that have a great desire to become Jews. What for? I don't know. You know, but uh, 50, 49. Um, nah. Like I said, I got, everybody should worry about themselves, not worry about it. My, my father, all over show, always said, if you can't do better, you can't criticize. This is a good if you can't do better with somebody else, you have no business criticizing. And you're from D.C.? I'm from D.C., yeah. What brought you to Columbia? Can I ask that question? Uh, uh, another business. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a master uh, fish, fish smoker, salmon smoker. Oh, you're a master salmon smoker. You, you smoke salmon? Yeah. I had three factories. One in Belgium and two in the United States. Where can we get salmon here? In the supermarket. Any supermarket. Do you yeah, get but it's not, it's, it's uh, Chile, Chilean salmon. Chilean smoked fish. Do, do you think he's good? He's as good? It's good. It's, 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 it's very good. It's okay. Yeah. Chile has a big, big business in that. They're very big. They're the biggest in Latin America. People smoke it, but the quality and everything isn't there. The best is Norwegian. How about Alaskan salmon? Not as good as Norwegian. No. Doesn't come close to Norwegian. Somebody, somebody told me that we are exporting regular salmon from Chile and is smoking it here. Yeah, is they do. That's just something. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that does that here. But its quality isn't good because it's a special kind of wood that you need. And it doesn't exist in Colombia. You have to bring it from Canada to the United States. It's a cedar. No, it's a... It's I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's, it's a special kind of wood. It doesn't exist here. It uh, me llamo Igal Friedman, eh, nací en Chile, soy rabino eh, desde el año 80 y fui rabino en Medellín en el año 84, 85, 86 eh, y estando en la ciudad me enteré de muchísimas similitudes que hay entre el judaísmo y Medellín, eh, empezando por el hecho que a los nacidos en, eh, en Antioquia, que es el nombre de la región, eh, no le llaman por lo general antioqueños, sino que les dicen paisa. Paisa viene de paisano. Paisano es una expresión muy típica entre judíos. Cuando se encuentran dos judíos se preguntan, ¿tú eres paisano también? Sí, Landsman. Ajá, exactamente, Landsman. la traducción de Landsman. Uh, y eso es la manera como los antioqueños se llaman. El hecho de tener ropa eh, blanca eh, y el hecho de tener un poncho que se utiliza en una ciudad donde no es necesario utilizar un poncho, obviamente. Eh, el poncho representa el talit y el carriel, que es como una... Eh, cartera pequeña que usan los hombres solamente el carriel es el lugar eh, si uno lo ve desde el punto de vista físico donde poder poner los tefilín y llevarlos colgados con uno durante todo el día de trabajo eh, y así como esas cosas la ciudad tiene cosas muy muy interesantes que están relacionadas con el judaísmo los diferentes lugares que hay y el nombre mismo de la ciudad de Medellín que proviene de la ciudad de Modi'in, que es la ciudad eh, en, en Israel donde se produjo toda la lucha entre los Seleucidas eh, y eh, los Hashmoneos que eh, lucharon para poder liberar a la tierra de Israel de manos de los... Eh, ¿Romanos? Eh, no, 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 antes de los romanos todavía, en, eh, antes de que llegaran los romanos estaban los griegos Seleucidas y que ellos fueron los que provocaron la, el, el profanar el templo y produjo como consecuencia que cuando los hashmoneos llegaron al templo eh, no encontraron aceite suficiente y entonces eh, encontraron la jarrita, la famosa historia de la fiesta de Hanukkah y de ahí proviene. Ahora, la ciudad de Modín tiene además una fiesta en diciembre que ellos no saben por qué y prenden velas en las aceras de las casas en diciembre justamente como en la época de Hanukkah 
y no tiene nada que ver con nada católico ni con nada de ninguna otra religión excepto creer que es una manera disfrazada de celebrar la fiesta de Hanukkah a nivel público en Medellín, en Medellín. es una fiesta exclusiva de Medellín ¿Cuándo es eso? Eso es en los primeros días de diciembre. Pero eh, donde más arraigado está y donde más se celebra es en Medellín. O sea, Medellín, eh, Antioquia, que tiene que ver con Antiochus Epifanes. Oh, Antiochus era, Epifanes. Ah, eh, que era el gobernador sobre, sobre la tierra de Israel en la época de los Seleucidas. Y él fue el que impuso todas las leyes en contra de los judíos. ¿Ok? Sí. Eh, tenemos eh, ciudades en, en Antioquia como Belén, eh, bueno, un montón de nombres Jericó. que Jericó, que tienen que ver con la tierra de Israel. O sea, y el, la misma forma de la vestimenta del antioqueño, vuelvo a insistir, o sea, no hay, yo entiendo que en Bogotá por el frío se use la ruana, sí. entiendo que en lugares fríos necesitas un poncho. Pero un lugar como Medellín, donde es primavera todo el año, ¿para qué necesitas un poncho? Eh, es un poncho que es una manera disfrazada de usar el talit. Lo mismo que, vuelvo a repetir, el carriel, que es esta cartera que se usa de costado, ¿verdad? Y sobre el lado derecho, um, sobre el derecho o el izquierdo. A mí me entró la duda ahora. Pero en todo caso tiene el porte como para poder guardar un par de tefilín y el antioqueño no sabe por qué lo usa y no sabe por qué es parte de la ropa típica porque es diferente que el, no, no es como el lugar donde guardar ni un machete, ni una herramienta, ni un arma, ni nada, sino que simplemente es una cartera de cuero donde uh, ahí adentro hay lo que ellos no saben que es lo que hay. bolsillos secretos. Ajá, y tiene mucho, exactamente, sí. o sea, como para no descubrir los tefilín que a lo mejor los primeros que usaron lo llevaban, andar con la cabeza cubierta. Oh, damn.